that's presented in the MOOC, the learning outcomes are not always formalised in the way recommended by the literature, but they do describe which soft skills learners will improve through the use of active teaching methods. For example, in the brainstorming experiment at the University of Montpellier, the aim is to improve soft skills such as teamwork, adaptability and flexibility. In the Structure of Matter course at Politecnico di Milano, the aim is to develop critical thinking and self-assessment skills. These soft skills are perfectly described in the LN for Work framework, but if teachers are not using this as a reference, the learning outcomes need to be defined even more clearly. In the Design Thinking pilot at IAO Montpellier, the learning outcomes are formulated as follows. Students will be able to solve problems and to critically analyse them. Students will also be able to demonstrate effective oral and written communication skills and decision-making skills. In several pilots, the use of active methods enable students not only to achieve learning outcomes related to soft skills such as communication, but also to learn the actual course content much more effectively than through a traditional transmissive course. However, are the learning outcomes of a course using active methods to acquire soft skills fundamentally different from those of a purely transmissive course? If the answer is yes, what differences might we find? From the literature, we know that ILOs need to be expressed from the learner's point of view, using verbs that express observable behaviour. In addition, we might want to state the conditions under which the learning is demonstrated and the degree or level of achievement. As an example, a simple ILO might be the learner will be able to perform independent and efficient time management. From what we've just seen, certain teachers find it difficult to express precise ILOs for soft skills development, which is understandable given the very nature of soft skills, which are sometimes hard to capture. The use of a framework such as the LN for Work Soft Skills framework can help here, as the soft skills have been defined according to different domains – social or interpersonal skills, intrapersonal skills, methodological skills and digital soft skills. If we take an example from the social skills, we can see that teamwork concerns the ability to build relationships of participation and cooperation with other people. It involves sharing resources and knowledge, harmonising interests and contributing actively to reach the objectives of the organisation. This definition can easily be transformed into an ILO, formulated as the learner will be able to demonstrate the ability to build relationships of participation and cooperation with other people, share resources and knowledge, harmonise interests, contribute actively to reaching the objectives of the organisation. In the majority of the pilots, active methods were used in courses to improve the learning of the course content, and the use of these methods also helped learners develop soft skills. For example, in the Organisation and Production Management course at the University of Warsaw, the use of mind maps helped to improve the soft skill problem solving, and above all, to improve the resolution of production management problems. In other courses, such as Marketing Intelligence at EO Montpellier, one of the contents of the course is design thinking, and rather than doing a traditional lecture theatre course, the teacher implemented a design thinking approach where the students learn the method by practising it. This helped them develop soft skills such as creativity and problem solving. The ILOs of this marketing intelligence course are expressed as follows. Students will be able to solve problems and to critically analyse them. Students will be able to demonstrate effective oral and written communication. In our opinion, these are very closely related to the activity of design thinking, which develops the skills of problem solving and communication. But this case doesn't represent the majority of examples, where the ILOs of the course are academic and linked to the discipline, as opposed to the ILOs of the active learning methods, which often concern soft skills such as communication, problem solving, etc. The question we can ask ourselves is, what is the most useful contribution for the student in his or her future career? The knowledge acquired or the soft skills that are more transversal and can be used in different situations? As we have seen, it is not always easy to formulate precise ILOs for soft skills development. Frameworks such as the one developed in a Learn for Work can be very helpful. HE teachers might need support, though in the wider French context of moving towards a competency-based approach, sometimes this support is seen as interference. Some teachers even see the exercise as a purely administrative constraint. We would suggest 
that by putting the learner at the centre and thinking deeply about what it is we want our students to achieve, we can recenter the definition of ILOs around pedagogical concerns. Furthermore, the sound definition of these ILOs based on agreed practice will be of great help when designing appropriate assessments, another very tricky area of soft skills development which we will be looking at in this MOOC. But before this, we invite you to think about the questions we've asked during this reflection on ILOs and to debate them with other learners. First of all, are the learning outcomes of a course using active methods to acquire soft skills fundamentally different from those of a purely transmissive course? If so, what differences can be observed? And what is the most useful contribution for the student in his or her future career? The knowledge acquired in the course or the soft skills that are more transversal and can be used in different situations? We look forward to finding out what you think and to hearing about your own experience.